Hey everyone, it's Harry again, and I want to get something off my chest today, and I want to share something with you. You know, I answer all your comments, and I do about 2,000 comments a month, trying to address all the questions I have. I have one of my videos that have over a million views, and it, I use MSG in that video. And I cannot tell you all of the questions I get from people about MSG because it's kind of controversial. I shot a video a couple of years ago to describe to my students what MSG is and what it is not. I've decided that I'm going to repost this uh, clip and edit it a little bit down so that I can point you to the clip whenever the anti-MSG people attack me on my channel so that you can arm yourself with science. Now, I understand some people don't believe in science and that's okay, but I want to share with you the science behind some flavor enhancers I use in my videos so that I can stop having to answer all these incessant questions from the anti-MSG posse. Today, the topic I'm going to cover is a somewhat controversial topic about using food additives, in, in specifically a flavor enhancer called MSG. MSG is a uh, chemical compound, uh, it's monosodium glutamate. So if you were probably wondering what it is, it, it looks like this. This is what MSG is. This is the seaweed kombu from Japan. And if you look closely, I'm going to put it near the camera. Can you see this little white dust on it here? So this little white dust here is MSG, monosodium glutamate. If you ever had uh, like a Caesar salad, uh, you had a uh, burger with the cheese dripping over the side, uh, you've had marinara sauce, spaghetti sauce, you had soy sauce and fish sauce, well, all those are naturally occurring sources of monosodium glutamate. And what it is, is actually uh, discovered by actually a German chemist in 1866. I think his name was Carl Riedhausen, but that's not important. Uh, what's important is in 1908, uh, Professor Ikeda, who's a chemist uh, with the uh, University of Tokyo, was trying to figure out, hey, you know, what's this white stuff or this crystalline stuff on this kombu seaweed that gives uh, soups and stews in Japan so much flavor because the Japanese have been using kombu for a thousand years to flavor their food and actually when he was trying to do this assignment he was actually trying to create kind of like a meat flavor or he called it a, a delicious flavor which uh, umami is and it's been added to one of the uh, to be the fifth uh, taste group after sweet sour salty and bitter so what this is is it gives you a very delicious flavor and you can add it to your food to create better flavor and deeper flavor like umami flavor. Now, you may not be aware, but uh, human beings have a natural affinity for MSG or monosome glutamate because uh, it's one of the most common amino acids on earth. Uh, there are 20 amino acids on earth and glutamic acid is one of them. So this is the sodium salt of the glutamic acid. And uh, a lot of people don't know this, but actually a uh, human uh, breast milk has the highest concentration of glutamic acid in the animal kingdom. And I believe it's like six times more glutamic MSG in human breast milk than is in cows and your body actually produces this uh, you have about I think four pounds of glutamic acid in your body as amino acid and uh, you ma actually manufacture this that's why it's called non-essential amino acid so what is it is this, this gray substance is a uh, powder and the powder can be made into a uh, food flavoring uh, and I'll show you some examples here and you can see here here's the uh, big bottle of MSG you can buy them in bulk they're not very expensive uh, you can get them as accent also, and uh, you can get it as a small dispenser called Ajino Moto. So uh, you can use this uh, in competition barbecue. Uh, a lot of teams do, I do when I compete, and it just gives a little boost of flavor. And uh, if you already use things like soy sauce, you like spaghetti sauce, you eat the cheese seizure salad, fish sauce, all, all these have naturally occurring MSG. So these versions of MSG, people always ask me, Harry, how do they work? Well, they work because your tongue has a taste receptor for MSG. So in around the year 2001, uh, researchers in the University of San Diego discovered that you have a receptor in your tongue for MSG. And uh, in 2006, the uh, Japanese uh, researchers actually found out that you have a uh, MSG receptor in your stomach, in your gut. And when your stomach senses the uh, glutamic acid, your body begins to stimulate its digestive process. So. As you probably have heard, uh, MSG is controversial because of uh, something they call the uh, Chinese restaurant syndrome. Kind of like when you eat too much Chinese food, you get kind of like a headache, maybe heart palpitations and then kind of a weird feeling. Well, you know, I have to tell you that uh, 
the study after study has shown that uh, when you consume MSG in the correct amount or safe amount, it's, it's, fair, it's perfectly safe. Now, you need to be aware that the fact I'm talking now and you can understand what I'm saying and you can remember what Harry said is because you have basically glutamic acid in your brain. So glutamic acid is a neurotransmitter in your brain. It allows you to understand and comprehend and you let your brain send messages all over the brain. Uh, so when you consume glutamic acid, right, and you may basically, if you eat too much, right, that probably I would say is not, is not good for you. So a lot of these studies that kind of like scare tactics out there, you know, they defeat the rat 50 pounds of caffeine and red dyes and they say, well, you know, caffeine is bad for you. So my recommendation to you is that study after study has proven that MSG is very, very safe. So you really don't need to fear it. You just need to know how to use it in the proper way. For those of you who enjoy seafood, you might be aware that a lot of sea creatures in the ocean, especially shellfish, have a lot of glutamic acid because when you live in the ocean, uh, your body salinity is about 1%. So your blood is 1%, your body solution is 1%. But actually, Mother Nature devised an ingenious method for you to live in the ocean by buffering the intake of salt when you're in the ocean using glutamic acid. That's why a lot of sea creatures, if you are a fisher, fisher person and you fish fish from the ocean and fish fish from the land, you always notice that fish in the ocean always taste better because of a higher glutamic acid. So there you go, a little factoid about glutamic acid. Now the question is, is glutamic acid safe? The answer is yes. And how do you use MSG in the form like this, in the white powder? You can actually shake some of it onto your meat or onto your sauce or onto your soups and stews. So let's say if I were to salt food to get a proper amount of salt on food, you probably need to salt it about 1%. So figure that ratio of, let's say if you cook 100 pounds of meat, the proper amount of salt to salt 100 pounds of meat will be about one pound, let's say, right? So the amount of glutamic acid, I would put probably maybe about like a third of a pound for 100 pounds of meat. So that's a good guideline. So when you're using MSG the way I use it, I just shake some on and uh, I shake it about one third the amount of the actual salt I will be used when I'm cooking. I hope that answers some of your questions about glutamic acid.